Hey everyone, it's Curtis here, and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the new 2021 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. Yes, a massive name, but it looks like a really cool bike. There are a ton of changes, so what I'm gonna do is first talk about the major changes, and then go into depth. First up, I wanna say the bike looks fantastic. I've personally never been a fan of the bigger adventure bikes, but KTM have made this bike look awesome. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. Okay, for those who want the short, straight to the point version, listen in now. The 1290 Adventure R has a lower seat height, updated engine, different frame, new swing arm, lower center of gravity, the fuel tank has been redesigned so the fuel is held lower in the tank, revised suspension, different ergos, new electronics, a new dash, and a new headlight. That is a ton of changes. This is a proper update. Okay, now let's have a deep dive into the changes. I'll start off with the redesigned frame and updated suspension. The frame has been shortened and the steering head has been moved back 15 millimeters. The swing arm is longer and KTM says this combination makes for improved maneuverability and stability. There is a new lighter subframe that also has storage underneath. The subframe is also stronger. The suspension has been tuned, not changed. The forks are 48 millimeter WP Explores, the same that are used on the KTM EXCs. The forks are completely adjustable for preload, rebound, and compression. They've also got these really cool dials so you can tweak them yourself on the fly. The shock uses the KTM PDS system. It too is adjustable and both the front and rear have 220 millimeters of travel. The engine has been updated with some pretty big changes. It's Euro 5 compliant, 1.5 kilograms lighter, and cranks out 160 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. Holy smokes, that is a lot of grunt for a dirt bike. The updates include one kilogram lighter engine cases, new pistons, altered coatings throughout the engine, revised oil routing, twin ignition with new coils and a centralized spark plug, a reworked shifting mechanism and a modified exhaust system to meet those Euro 5 requirements. They've also changed the air filter design. The air filter is now easier to access and the filter now has vertical ribs instead of horizontal. Ooh, <laughs> apparently this helps for keeping out the dust. The gearbox has shorter and faster changes, and the drum is now made of aluminium instead of steel. The clutch has been given a minor update that is supposed to improve disengagement at lower speeds. The bike also now has two radiators instead of one. KTM have done this mainly to better disperse heat at low speeds. This is always a good thing, especially when you're riding off-road in hot weather. It should keep the bike cooler too. As you can see, the bodywork has been heavily revised, and I think it looks great. The goal for the Super Adventure R was to minimize the fairing and lower the center of gravity. So what we've got is a lower seat height and a fuel tank that holds its weight lower. All these changes KTM have done looks like it's gonna make the 1290 more flickable and easier to ride off-road. No doubt these traits will help on the road too. I like the new LED headlight they've gone with. On the 390, 790, and 890 Adventures, they look a bit like a praying mantis or something weird, whereas this definitely looks nicer and is much more stylish. There is a fancy new 7-inch TFT dash with all the tech in the world, and the bike itself has a shite load of tech too. Unfortunately, you will have to buy a lot of that tech as an optional extra. So if you want a quick shifter, the rally pack and tech pack, you gotta pay for that. It really shits me that they don't include these options as standard. I mean, this is gonna be a 19,000 USD bike. So this is a premium motorcycle. It should come with all the bells and whistles. The rims have the option to be tubeless. They've got O-ring sealing in the spokes and there's also tire pressure monitors. I really like that, that's a good idea. So that is all the big changes. Tech wise, the bike weighs 221 kilograms, it's 487 pounds dry. The seat height is 880 millimeters, 34.65 inches. So that's actually relatively low for this style of bike. Service intervals are a massive 15,000 kilometers, it's like 9,300 miles. The brakes are Brembo and the fuel tank is 23 liters. So it should have a pretty good range. I think KTM are quoting 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers. I'll put all the specs up on my website so you can read through them all at your own pace. What do you all think? I think this is a great looking bike. I do find it bizarre that this is a 550 pound, 160 horsepower off-road monster, but it would be a lot of fun to open up in the fire trails. Picking it up while stuck on a hill doesn't sound too appealing though. And how is Chris Birch riding this thing? He is a beast of a rider. All right, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's subscribed. I hit 1,000 subscribers today. It may not seem like a lot, but I am absolutely stoked. I'll be doing a video for it in the coming days. If you haven't subscribed, 
Do it. Be a legend. I'll love you forever. All right. Keep it on the back wheel, people.